Hi everyone and welcome to Club 2 episode 5 of Rolling in the Isles, an FM22 British Isles Journeyman series with me, the United City FM. Welcome along. So, since the last time you and I were together, we've only played three matches. We're getting to the end of the first half of the season before it breaks uh, and uh, splits into two leagues from this point onwards. So we've only had three matches, a win a loss and a draw in those three matches meant that we've been inconsistent. We've dropped a place. Today, our third place Ballin and Mallard side played Carrick in second place. Can we get the three points? Let's find out. So second v third today in the league. It's going to be a tricky one. We've played them twice already, once in the league when they won and once in the cup where we won. So this is the bit of the rubber match really to see who can get bragging rights over the season. If we were to lose, if we look at the table here just above the face cam, you'll see that we're sitting in third position, one point behind them, same goal difference. If we lose, I feel like we'll just drop back into the pack a little bit and that could make us make it a little bit tricky to see if we could potentially end the season in one of these two um, playoff uh, positions. Uh, the loss that we had in the league since you and I were together last was against Newry, the top side in the division. So not a huge surprise there. They are absolutely running away with it. But if we were to win today... Uh, that potentially, I think, really gives us a big opportunity to stay in these playoff positions. So could be a real challenging fixture, but it could be a really beneficial one if we get the right, uh, right result. So in terms of those three fixtures, you'll see since we played the Welders in the last episode, Dundella, we beat them comfortably 2-0 at home. We got absolutely thumped by Newry, unfortunately 3-0 at home as well, but they are absolutely running away with it. I think Anna really got a bit of a rub uh, by the fact that we lost to Newry so badly because they're sitting fairly low in the table and we really struggled to cope with them. It was a real drab performance. So... I think, as I say, they benefited the fact that we came off that big loss from Newry the game before. But we're back at it today, hopefully, and we got a really big game against Carrick. The last couple of games of the season are not too bad for us. Tobermore, uh, Dergview, Ballyclare before we come back next episode and play Port Stewart in the home game in the last game of this particular section. Then the top six sides break off and play themselves for the remainder of the season and the bottom six do as well. Um, so we're aiming totally to be in that top six and it looks like we will be. And then the hope is maybe we could get into a playoff position. But we'll have to wait and see on that one. For today, though, it's all about that top of the table clash against Carrick. Can we get the better of them? Let's see. So we have a couple of injury issues. One at right fullback. Carey is out just for a couple of days. So Smith will play today. Um, McCorgill out as well. He's a bit part player, really comes in and out of the side here and there. Um, so that's not too bad. But what we do have back is one of our main strikers. McGlynn is back. He's been out for a little while. Had a game back. Uh, looked reasonable doing it. It's just about bringing him back up to match sharpness now. But it's really good to have him back. Bander and McGlynn up top were fairly lethal when they've played together before. So hopefully with a new improved side behind them in terms of our confidence, our morale, our momentum is behind us. Uh, in a lot of ways compared to what we were at the beginning of the season, then I hope that these two can do the job for us. So we're reasonably fit and healthy and, and ready to go in this particular game. So that's not too bad. I've got a little bit of a dilemma down the right-hand side. Crook and Moorhead are switching in and out just at the moment, trying to find the one that's really going to bed themselves in on this right-hand side. Uh, and Burns on the left-hand side in that slightly advanced role is fairly vital to the way that we play. But it's just a little bit below the standard of some of the other players around him. So we're looking for a little bit more from him. I'm just wondering whether we actually change his role a little bit and put him up there as the advanced playmaker rather than the inverted winger, maybe. We're going to try that, I think, today. If we put him in that support role, hopefully that will uh, get him the ball a little bit more. He is one of our better players and he can feed these two up front. We'll see whether that works or not, but something to think about, absolutely. So... Anyway, for today's match, as I say, we're reasonably in good, um, good nick, 
The form has been a little bit patchy. Let's see if we can get back on that. But we are away from home at a very difficult opposition. So we're going in with Williamson, uh, Williamson in goal, Smith at right back, Curry at left back, Armstrong and McCann in central defence, uh, Grace and McKee in central midfield, Crook on the right, Burns on the left, McGlynn and Bander up top with a bench of Dealey, Miller, Henderson, Moorhead and McIlwain. So let's get into today's game and see what happens. So considering that we're away from home against a very tricky opposition, I've gone very chilled out in the team talk and basically just said no one expects us to get anything here. Uh, so let's go out and play with no pressure and see where that takes us, really. Uh, I didn't want to put the pressure on. There's no point. Carrick are a very hard side. They've beaten us in the league once already. So we'll just have to see how this particular game goes. There's no guarantees here at all. But hopefully we can compete. Hopefully the, the little mini dip in form because of that Nuri loss has gone away and we can put ourselves back on the pitch with a little bit of sense of uh, let's get back to winning ways really but Carrick yeah they're, they're going to be tricky but we've got the ball we've worked the ball very nicely uh, from this left hand side all the way up through the middle and there was a decent shot from Bander just outside the top of the penalty box goes narrowly wide but it's an early sighter and that's a good thing that just puts them on the back foot just a little bit and knows that if we get anywhere around there we're not afraid to have a go and we have been having a go. Four shots at goal already. None on target yet. Probably all from quite a long way out. Uh, but Carrick yet to register anything. But here is their chance. <laughs> they register a goal. Of course they register a goal. One shot, one chance, one goal. We've uh, huffed and puffed. We have not blown their, ball, uh, their uh, door down at all. They have just stomped all over our front lawn. And... Um, <laughs> I don't know where that analogy was going. Anyway, they got a goal and we haven't. And that's really frustrating a little bit. One shot, one goal, four shots on target. Uh, four shots on goal, should I say. None on target. Again, it's, it's what we've got to figure out. It's what we've got to find a way to change. Is getting those shots on target regularly. So we've got the chance of getting some goals, really. If we don't do that, we can't score the goals. They've had two and two now, two shots on uh, goal, two on target, five and zero for us. We've had a little bit more possession. XG, the expected goals of the match is in our favour just a little bit, but not good enough to get us a goal. And we're getting at half time one nil down. I, ge I guess it's kind of be uh, to be expected, but you really kind of hope that you get a, a bit more of a combative performance somehow. Maybe I relaxed them too much at the start of the first half, possibly. I don't know, but we're certainly going to change that at half time. So we're going to go and point the finger. Show me something else in the second half. It hasn't said you're terrible. It's just saying, come on, let's do something different. Let's find a different way through this. Uh, so we go into the shouts and we're going to fire them up for the second half. And we'll see whether we can just focus the minds a little bit in that final third, really. Uh, five shots at goals and none on target is not the way to go, is it? Uh, early stages in the second half have been very, very quiet. It's a problem. Unless we do something about this, nothing is going to change. So, 62 minutes. I'm going to have to change stuff. It's, it's too passive. It's not. There's no oomph behind any of the play. We're not getting highlight after highlight of us trying and battering the door. It's just nothing. It's just drifting along. So, we're going to have to change it. Uh, how we change it is always a challenging question to answer. Um, right, we're going to go quite forceful, I think. Uh, Crook will take him out. McIlvain goes in. We'll put him up top through the middle. <clears throat> Excuse me. We'll bring Burns more central. Uh, we'll go into the setup. And we will go into the Gegen press, I think. We could play like Route 1 and just buck, uh, chuck it up there and see what happens. But I think if we try and press them from the front a little bit more, then maybe there's a chance we could get something from this. Uh, I'm going to switch these two round. I'm going to put Bander in the middle there. We're going to play two pressing forwards either side, uh, both on attack. Just to make sure that we are up and really charging at them. And we'll put Bander in as the poacher. See if he can get a couple of chances. So that's how we're going to set up. I think I'm going to reduce um, uh, withdraw, should I say, uh, the central midfielder into a support central midfield role rather than the box to box. So hopefully Grace will hold his position just a little bit and support us uh, at the back a little bit more. But 
those are the changes that we're going to make just at the moment. We're going to play that for another 10 minutes or so and see what happens there. And then we'll think about a couple more personnel changes maybe. But <clears throat> too passive, it's just a problem at the moment. They hit the woodwork from a, uh, a free kick down this left-hand side. They cross the ball in, get a good header, and it hits the top of the crossbar and goes over the goal. And again, 10 minutes has flown by and we've done absolutely nothing. There's no change in the style of play somehow. So we're going to have to go back in again, change a couple more people up. Um, so let's see what we can do. Uh, Bandon not having a good day on a day where you need him to. Neither is Armstrong at the back. So we'll take him out and, and just protect ourselves at the back. And then I think what we'll do... <coughs> excuse me, my... my Chest is causing me some problems today. Uh, Banda comes out. I think we'll put Henderson in. And I think we'll go a slightly different route. Let's bring him back into midfield. Um, and we'll put McKee behind them. Uh, move Henderson over. So we're playing in a, a diamond shape. We've been trialling this a little bit on the uh, on the streams. I'm over on twitch.tv forward slash the United City FM every weekday afternoon, 3 till 5 p.m. We've been trialling this sort of tactic. Hasn't worked fantastically well over there. Uh, but we'll see whether just getting into a ticky-tacka style of play with a diamond, working through the middle potentially. So we'll, uh, we'll focus our attention on that. Just see if we can work the ball into the box and maybe have a couple of better opportunities at goal because of that. I'm clutching at straws. To be honest, it's it's just that really. I'm one nil down. We might as well lose two nil rather than one nil and not and, and still have a go, basically, and try. Um and hopefully something can come of it and maybe we'll get a goal back. You never know. But is Carrick on the ball causing us problems just because they're Carrick and they can do that? <laughs> And a little bit of pace down that left-hand side for them. Got past the defender, got onto the ball, and then he swept the shot over the top of the bar. 15 minutes to play. We've only registered one shot on target the entire match. And I don't know how you change that, really. I mean, you can try and cha train it into them to have better shots, but at this level, it's probably not likely to work too much in terms of uh, the difference you can make. It's just about the quality of player, really. And at the moment, for whatever reason, uh, where, where both of my strikers who started the game were scoring goals here and there, today they've decided not to, unfortunately, and we lose 1-0. And it's what I feared would happen, ultimately. We came up against a very good side. But there is just that chance that we're going to get swallowed up by the pack of teams behind us if we're not very, very careful. That helps Carrick enormously to get potentially one of those playoff spots behind Newry in the league. So we can go and point the finger. Uh, disappointing we didn't win considering we were on the top and had the... No, we can't say that. We didn't have... No, <laughs> not gonna, I'm going to say they're unlucky. Let's, let's not dig them out too much, but I'm not going to tell them that we were unlucky because we were the better side or anything because I don't think we were particularly... It's dropped us down to fourth. Dirkview uh, above us. We still play them, remember, in one of our fixtures still to come. So that's going to be an interesting one. Um, and yeah, just a, again, a little bit disappointing, a little bit inconsistent. Um, just another mini run of slightly poor form as well. Three games in a row now where we haven't quite managed to work this out, but... OK, we'll have to move forward again. We've got another three or four matches to play till the end of this particular part of the season. So we're going to have to dust ourselves off again and go again. But for today, unfortunately, we lost. So I just get the feeling that in the last time we were in the schedule page earlier in the, t in the episode, we may have missed a game out at the bottom of the screen here. I thought we were coming back possibly to play Port Stewart in the last match of the, of the season. We're not of this section of the season, should I say, but it's Lothgall that uh, are the last game. So we've got Tobermore United in the cup. We've got Dergview, Ballyclare and Port Stewart to play home away and home in the league. And then a home game to finish this section of the league off with Lothgall. So that's where we're heading. We'll be back for that final game of this section of the season in the next episode it's a little bit of a shame isn't it well I felt we were beginning to get going with this Armar Welders and Dundella um, section here I thought we were beginning to score some goals and looking better and then it's come to a bit of a crashing halt because of that Newry thrashing that we got 
the, the team have struggled to um, get back from it a little bit. Hopefully, in the cup, we can rotate the side a little bit, get some fresh players in, get a good performance from that, and that may set us up for a better last few matches of this part of the season. But we'll have to come back next episode and find that one out. Uh, between now and then, I'll play all these matches, see how we go. We'll come back for that final section game here. And we will hope to be in this top six in the in the league. Now, I don't think there's any doubt that we will be really. I mean, for us to lose uh, another eight points on currently Balleclair to get into that top six would be quite some fall off, wouldn't it, really? So I'm comfortable that we can be in this top six. And it is very close. If you, if you look, there's six points between sixth and second. Newry, obviously, are way out in front and they're going to win the league at a canter. But other than that, all of these places are up for grabs, I think, including those two playoff spots. We've got to get back on the winning track, though, to get ourselves up in that conversation. So come back next episode. We'll see how we get on there uh, and see how we finish off this section before the split in the league happens. Until then, thank you for joining me today. I really appreciate it. Not the result I was looking for. More importantly, to be honest, not the performance I was looking for. You just want them to be a little bit more interested in having a go and pushing it. And today felt really flat. Maybe that was my fault at the beginning for chilling them out too much. I don't know. But ultimately, I expect more. We'll hopefully get more next time. Anyway, thank you for joining me. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and join my United City community. The more the merrier. Click that like button on this particular episode. That will help me get seen by more people. Until next time, take care of yourselves. I'll see you very soon. Bye for now.